to Life Time on Court, the show where we break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. I'm your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we are talking about Murder in the Vineyard. Murder in the Vineyard stars Helena Matson, Emma Furman, Matthew Eric White, and Daniel Hall. On the show, we either pour it up, which means yes, or put a cork in it, which means no thank you. So, what are we going to do to this movie? Put a cork in it. So sad because the movie is about a vineyard. Now, if you haven't seen the movie and you want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to go ahead and hit the pause button and come on back because I'm going to do a quick recap starting now. The movie begins with very scary music intercut with shots of a beautiful vineyard. Honestly, what's the deal with this music? It's terrible. Emma and her daughter, Bay, inherit a vineyard. Oh, maybe it's B. B is starting at a new school and meets a popular soccer player named Brian. They hit it off. The only problem is that he has a girlfriend. Her name is April. She kind of reminds me of Amber from Teen Mom. April sees the two together and forbids Brian from seeing the new student. He breaks up with her. And April starts a slam site with her friends, claiming B has a venereal disease. Emma is also dating an old flame named Luke. Helena Masterson plays Emma and is tragically underused in this movie. Back at school, Brian stands by B as her classmates make fun of her. He invites her to a game and then a party afterwards. She is roofied by the popular girls. B wakes up the next day with bruises on her body. Emma disapproves of her daughter's choices and shames her for drinking. What? Good. You're finally up. You okay? What happened? Brian dropped you off. He and Luke had to help me get you up the stairs. More pictures surface of B, and she is forced to show her mother. Emma calls the principal and a detective and has it out with them. The guidance counselor even tells Emma to, quote-unquote, stay strong. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this, you hear me? I want you to stay strong. Don't let them get to you. Okay. Like, what is this advice? Emma screams at the detectives and decides to take matters into her own hands. She tries to get information from April, but April is murdered. Then she talks to Mac, a member of the soccer team, and realizes that he is the guy who roofied her daughter when she catches him trying to do the same to her. She excuses herself and finds her daughter tied up in a shed. Emma is attacked by Mac before she can save her daughter. Emma wakes up tied up, and Mac admits to everything. His reasoning? Why her? I knew the moment I laid my eyes on her. She's got that, uh, you know, I'm too good for the world kind of thing about her. B gets free and unties her mother. Then, Mac is stabbed and they run through the vineyard. The detective shows up and stops Mac and reads him his Miranda rights. The detective admits that he was wrong the whole time. Just to be clear, there is no murder in the vineyard. This is a misleading title. There's barely any murder at all. Emma makes a toast with her very first bottle of wine from her vineyard. She is engaged to the soccer coach. B and Brian are dating too. So that's good. And that is Murder in the Vineyard. Why Murder in the Vineyard just didn't work for me was that, first of all, it's a total waste of Helena Matson's talents. She's like the Nicole Kidman of Lifetime movies. She's amazing. And she really was just playing the mom role here. Kind of defending her daughter, but also not really in the movie. The movie promised a murder in the vineyard, and we actually never got one. No murder in the vineyard, not a lot about the vineyard. The vineyard was very secondary. I, this title was so confusing. The movie tried to tackle a really serious subject and did it probably as tone deaf as possible. If we're going to be a PSA about date rape, maybe give some more information and depict the trauma of what that is. It's not a plot point. It is someone's life. Overall, I'd say it's not really worth a watch, so I'd just skip this one altogether. 
Now it is time for the Minority Report, the segment where we talk about representation in TV movies and why it matters. This movie did a good job at sprinkling in characters that were POC, so that's a P-L-U-S, a plus. He had Tracy, played by Kimberly Dooley, Juan, played by Randy Vasquez, Reese, played by, oh, I forgot, Reese, played by Mariah Wesley, and Jenny, played by Jada Iman Benjamin. So keep it up, Lifetime. Good job, you. And I think that wraps up today's episode. If you want more Lifetime in Court, you can listen to our podcast, also called Lifetime in Court, available wherever you get your podcasts. Check out our website. We've got blog reviews, lifetimeuncourt.com. You can follow me at Patrick Mikal or the show at Lifetime in Court. Don't forget to like and subscribe this channel. Leave a comment below. We love hearing from you. I want to know what you thought about this movie or suggest a movie that we should cover in the future because we watch these movies so you don't have to. But if you do, we'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to donate to the show. There's a coffee link, K-O-F-I-E, down below. Leave a $3 tip so I can uh, keep getting more white owl wine. Yeah. They're not a sponsor. Okay, I think that's it. Bye. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye.